Hello students, Michael Sanchez here. Thank you so much for watching. Today is Fiddle Fridays, 5 o'clock Eastern Standard Time every Friday. I'm going to be teaching a class uh, highlighted at learning some fiddle concepts. And I'm really excited about this class today. We're going to learn lots of good stuff. We're actually going to be uh, talking about a new book that I'm going to be kind of highlighting and working through with students for the next couple months. Uh, I'd like to introduce to you guys uh, each of our students that are joining us in the live class today. Uh, first of all, I'd like to introduce Adeline. She is from Germany. Adeline, would you like to say hello? Hi to everybody. <laughs> Adeline joined us last week in, uh, in the class, and uh, she is not able to do many classes because uh, in Germany it's very late at this time, and uh, any of the other classes that I have, unfortunately, are uh, past her bedtime, being that they'd be at like 3 or 4 in the morning. So I don't expect you to uh, <clears throat> participate in that later class, uh, Adeline, so no problem. Uh, but thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Uh, next, we have actually a brand new student that's uh, on today for the first time, and uh, we've been talking a lot on Facebook. Uh, Debbie, uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, my name's Debbie, and I'm from Indiana. I am completely new to the violin. My granddaughter started taking lessons three months ago, and I, the Suzuki Method, and I attend every class with her. And I thought, well, I'm learning what she's learning, but I can't go home and apply it. So I bought a violin, and I, in the past week and a half, picked it up and started playing. But see, I've been watching, Michael, your videos every night for three months, and I seem to like your method of teaching, and so I've been doing that, and I can play Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. <laughs> Congratulations. That's excellent for a short amount of time, and uh, that's awesome that you've decided to take the adventure of learning the violin. Uh, it's a lot of fun, and um, actually today we're going to be talking a little bit about the fiddle, which is uh, the same instrument, just a different way to play it. So hopefully you'll learn a little bit today uh, as far as that goes. It might get you uh, inspired to uh, maybe learn some, some fiddle stuff. That so is thank exactly you so much. Why I, that's exactly why I wanted to play the violin is to, to become a fiddler. A more violin, or what's your, what's your thought on that? Oh, I want to fiddle. I want mm -hmm. to play the fiddle with my son who plays the guitar and my dad who plays the harmonica. Very well, then. Well, this will be a perfect class for you, then. Good. Thank you. We also have with us today um, Eric from Canada. Uh, he's been in lots of classes, and I really appreciate you joining us today, Eric. Thank you. I enjoy all of your classes and uh, meet other people, too. Thank you. You're welcome. So, yeah, Eric's been on a couple of the Fiddle Fridays, and uh, the last couple of weeks we've been learning improvisation. Uh, so um, we kind of learned the basics on that. There's certainly more that I can say about it, um, but I decided to kind of go a different route for now, and uh, if you guys have any questions about the improvisation concepts, please email me at rivertownviolin.com, at hotmail.com, sorry, and I can help you guys uh, with any questions you might have about improvisation. Uh, but yeah, we're going to be learning uh, through a book that's going to teach us some fun songs, and we're going to be doing a whole bunch of good, good fun activities with that. We also have with us today Susan from Pittsburgh. Susan, would you like to say hello? Hi, everybody. Susan's been playing for uh, for just a little while now, a couple weeks, and uh, we've been trying to motivate her and inspire her as much as possible. But it uh, seems like you're on the right track, Susan, so far, and uh, I'm glad that you've got now got to meet Debbie, who's also new to the violin. So this is a really great platform that allows us to kind of interact and meet each other and hopefully keep each other motivated. So uh, really, really happy that uh, all you guys are here today and joining us. We also have Colleen with us uh, from the audience. She's I'm um, going to be uh, asking some questions uh, via text. So anybody that's logged into the Google Plus platform can uh, uh, participate in the discussion. Uh, anything that you text, I get directly and can answer your questions live. Uh, you can also participate like all the students today uh, just by um, going to Google Plus and email me your e email ID that's associated with the account, and then I can add you to my circle. Once you're in my circle, then you are able to uh, join the classes live before they start and hang out in the room with us before we go live. So uh, today I'd want to um, talk maybe a little bit about um, just the difference between the violin and fiddle because I know some people don't even know the difference and uh, the similarities. So basically the, the violin and the fiddle are the exact same instrument 
It just differs on how you play it. So believe it or not, out of this instrument, you can play bluegrass, fiddle, you can play Celtic, Irish, you name it, but you can also play extremely beautiful classical techniques and uh, Mozart-type tunes. So this can play just about anything you think of. So for example, here's your uh, classical. Got your Irish. And so on and so forth. So you got your Irish music, you got your uh, bluegrass as well out there, and um, Celtic fiddle. If you guys have any questions regarding like the different styles and kind of how they differ, I can give you an in-depth explanation on every one of them. Uh, but basically, um, the fiddle is the exact same instrument, but it differs in the technique. Uh, so there's a lot of things, for example, with fiddle, like sliding, uh, for example, doing a lot of like double stops, chords, um, you know, and then just uh, certain things with the bow technique, like circling the hand for different bluegrass techniques, um, different things. So this book uh, is actually what I'm going to recommend for all you guys to get that are interested in these classes for the next couple months. It's called You Can Teach Yourself Fiddling. Kind of got a nice little picture there of a, a country cowboy uh, making all these people dance. <laughs> so this book uh, works really well um, when you're just starting to fiddle. And I would recommend to any student that's been playing under five years. Um, this book uh, it starts off you know, really easy, really simple with some songs like uh, you got Camp Town Races and Liza Jane. So these songs are pretty simple, but what we're going to learn is we're going to learn how to do certain techniques with them, like sliding. So here's uh, your basic Liza Jane without any fiddle technique. But now once I teach you guys some techniques, we're going to be able to make it sound more like this. So uh, basically all, all I was doing is sliding into some notes. I was um, doing some different things with down sliding and uh, just kind of the technique of the bow a little bit too, uh, just from that one song. So it's just a matter of understanding the different um, spots where you should slide and so on. So let me start off by kind of just explaining this, the fiddle slide. This is going to be probably a good place to start. And uh, Susan and Debbie, you guys are definitely, I think, going to be able to do this, um, basically. But, you know, definitely focus on technique. That's the most important. Um, what's important with when, the, when you do the fiddle slide is that your angles of the fingers stay the same. So no matter what happens, you always want this to happen. You don't want to come in and out with the fingers, depending on the note. So see how the angle is staying the same with the slide, okay? So let's say I want to slide into this note right here. This is a C sharp. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start a half step below the C sharp and I'm going to slide into the exact place where I put my finger. So, bum, bum, that's a fiddle slide. Bum, okay? So just like this. Here's just the note. Here's the slide. Now make sure you don't go farther. Make sure you're hitting it right on where it's supposed to be. Now if I was doing a one, it'd be starting off back here and then ending up where the one would, would stop. So. If I was doing a three, this is where the three ends up. I would start at where my high two would go. So right here. So we got two, three. It's like that. 
So those are all fiddle slides. As far as the uh, the speed of them, it's all about the um, kind of the, the the slow slide because that makes it sound kind of droopy, kind of bluegrass, kind of uh, hillbilly-ish. Uh, it doesn't have to be real fast. Like in classical, you want to get from this point to this point as fast as you can when you're playing uh, these notes because you don't want it to have that kind of droopy slide. But with fiddle, you want to hear that slide. <laughs> Whereas, whereas classical would be, you don't want to hear that. So, but fiddle very much so. All right. Uh, do, do any of you guys have uh, have your instruments with you? Um, maybe just if you guys just want to try one slide. I uh, promise I won't say anything bad. I just want to critique and give, tell you guys if you're doing it right. Um, any of you guys want to try? <laughs> Eric, please. I'll give it a try. <laughs> And as far as the bow, it's really important to keep the bow moving while doing it. Uh, so a good drill would be to like just try to do the slides, but never stop your bow like this. Notice the bow is moving the same speed. So try it again. See if you can keep the bow moving back and forth. the pitch. <laughs> no, no, actually that was good. That was right in tune. Okay. So uh, that was very proper, very good slide. Um, do you guys have any questions, Adeline, Debbie, or Susan, regarding the fiddle slide so far? Feel free to raise your hand. Um, do have some students uh, also asking questions from the audience. Um, he, uh, Luis Cortez actually just asked a question. He said, is the, uh, the slide hard to learn? Um, I would say not so bad. I, I would say it's kind of an easier technique. Um, it's kind of the first technique that I teach with fiddle. Uh, it's actually also what I cover in like my beginner fiddle series of two, violin tutor pro, or sorry, violin fiddle tutor pro series one. That's the first concept we we learn. Um, so I really think anybody can kind of do this. Uh, you know, to make sure, like I said, the angles always stay the same. And uh, some, most of you guys have probably seen my videos on this, but I just want to reiterate it. Um, you can see here my, these two spots on my hand. Make sure that your um, hand is at this spot on the fingerboard and not at this spot because it's really important to keep your knuckles up as well while doing the slides. So make sure your hand is here and not here. This, this kind of causes you to have low knuckles. We want to have high knuckles. Even when we're sliding, I see a lot of students kind of dip down. They're dipping because of the slide. You don't do that. Just squeeze your fingers back. Broom, broom, not the hand dipping. Just the fingers. So, Ellen, do you want to try it? Um, yes, I can do it. Okay, please do. Very good. That was uh, absolutely perfect. Um, Eric, would you like to try a, um, a first finger slide? First finger slide. So now we're going to start off basically where the B flat would be. So this is your normal one position. This is a low one position. Mm -hmm. We're going to slide into a normal one. Broom, broom. I'll try that. Okay. 
Very good. And uh, you, you're actually you're doing it absolutely perfect, Eric. Uh, the thing that can get um, confusing is that you know maybe just the one note doesn't sound the greatest, but it does sound really good when you start to put it in the songs. So this is how it sounds again with the songs. <laughs> So, <laughs> okay, so that's the uh, the up slide. Um, Susan or Debbie, if you want to try it, uh, feel free. You don't have to. I know you guys have just kind of started. Um, uh, I'm just yeah. going to listen for now. That's totally I fine. Said I'm totally fine. Okay, so uh, that was the up slide. Now let me show you guys the uh, the down slide, which is uh, a little bit different. So. A downslide is basically when you take the note that you're playing and you start on it, but then once you start it, you start to go down. You start to go the other direction. Okay? So with the first finger, actually, a downslide, I pretty much only recommend to start doing downslides with the first finger. Uh, and it's kind of like you're going down, and then once you reach the very bottom, that's when it just goes into the next note. It's, it's good to do a downslide with a first finger and then an open string. So just like this. Like that. And the second it reaches the bottom, that's when you change the bow direction. Like that. Uh, Eric, would you like to try it? Yes, I'll give it a try. That's it. Excellent. That was perfect. All right, uh, Adeline. The down slide. There you go. And you were just getting the hang of it that once it reaches the bottom, that's when you change the direction. Very good. So basically, uh, yeah, any time that you have a first finger and then an open string, a, a down slide works really good. Uh, and that can be done in any, any music. So if you guys see my music here, right here, this is a one on the A string. This is an open. It would, it would be appropriate to do a down slide right here into this note. Um, it would also be appropriate to do it here. One, zero. Uh, here's another one, one, zero. And then one, zero. So basically what I would do with a down slide is I would mark in the music a symbol. I'll show you what it looks like. Looks just like this. That's basically saying that you're down sliding into this note. That's a fiddle down slide. So you see it here, you see it here, everywhere. Um, and that's signifying that that's when I'm going to do the, the down slide. Uh, the opposite of that, the up slide, is just the, the same idea, just the, the other direction. So I'll show you how that looks. Like this. So now um, this is an up slide. It's going the other direction. It's kind of showing like it's going up. So that's a that's an up slide. That's an up slide. Up slide. And so on. So what I'm going to do is actually play for you guys these first two lines. This is Liza Jane. This is a famous fill tune. Your famous bluegrass fill tune. It's similar to what I did earlier, but it's going to be exactly what I have on the page. It's like that. So that was the uh, Liza Jane. 
piece. So what I recommend is that you guys get this book, and then we're going to be working through potentially uh, a lot of these songs in here. Um, Camp Town Races is kind of uh, easy. That's one we can do probably next week, this one here. Um, we got uh, like Buffalo Gals, Shady Grove, Oh Susanna. I'm sure you guys have heard of Oh Susanna. That's a good one. Another one here. We got uh, Dixie. That's a good one. Uh, what else would we maybe work through in this book? Uh, Violent Cabbage Down is good. Old Joe Clark is good. Cripple Creek. Uh, Cripple Creek's a one every fiddle player has to know. That's a good one. And then actually, once we get to the, like the middle of the book, we start to learn kind of double stops. Uh, so I'm probably going to recommend. Uh, um, some double stop stuff. Uh, that would be a little bit more advanced. Susan and uh, Debbie, I wouldn't expect you to do that anytime soon. Um, that would be when you hit two strings at once. That's fun. So yeah, I would say at least the first uh, half of the book, I'd say we can work through. Um, you can get this online at uh, you know Amazon.com. You know they got a lot of those specials going on. Um, any basic music store, um, get it on my superior sites, whatever. Uh, I can send you guys a link. You just email me, rivertownviolin at hotmail.com. would love for you guys to get it and work through this class each week. Uh, Colleen's actually asking a question uh, in the audience. She says, what's the difference between a, a lick and a riff? Interesting question. It uh, has a little bit to do kind of with um, uh, either, you know, a set of notes or just um, one note, uh, a lick is kind of more like a set of notes, so you're kind of um, doing a certain passage, whereas a riff is kind of just like a one note, and it kind of can be like a big slide. It's kind of like more of a guitar thing, a riff, guitar riff. That's a good question. Um, but like a, a lick, uh, like a fiddle lick would be kind of like a, like a little passage that um, you would play at, like at the end of a piece or something. like that would be like a fiddle lick. All right. Um, you guys have any uh, questions so far about the book or just uh, the process of learning the fiddle or anything related to the fiddle? Uh, Adeline. Um, do you know if I can get this book in Germany too? Because uh, when I buy it uh, from the U.S., then there's um, a lot of shipping tax or something like that. <laughs> Oh, I, I'm sure there's um, a lot of stores out there um, by you. Um, I'm positive. I mean, you'll find it somewhere in Germany uh, that to where you wouldn't have to be have a ship from the U.S. It's a worldwide book, I'm sure. So, okay. <laughs> good question. Um, Eric, did you have a question? Yes, uh, it may be out of purpose, but uh, I was curious to see if you could play sometime a very classical tune with uh, a style totally uh, totally bluegrass with the techniques and uh, the style bluegrass to something very classic. <laughs> <laughs> I like that idea. Um, I tell you what, if everybody raises their hand and wants me to do it, I'll do it. <laughs> Adeline? Okay. Um, Okay, something like uh, like a Mozart type piece or something, and, and kind of put some little licks in it. <laughs> okay, I'm doing this on the spot. Um, let me quick find something. Hold on. 
Uh, well, you know what? I'll just do a piece I know my, from from just playing out. Let's see. Um, I'll just pick like a baccarini. <laughs> Composing music for classical and fiddle. <laughs> yeah, basically, once you start putting slides in, once you start to do like uh, shuffle techniques, um, once you start doing um, just different things that you see in different styles, yeah, it sounds sounds more fiddle. So that's all in the same instrument. So thank you for that request. <laughs> uh, Michael. Susan, yes, go ahead. How hard is it to go from learning the violin to learning the fiddle? Can you do both at the same time? Or should you do one? Should you learn the violin before you do the fiddle? Excellent question, Susan. Um, basically, what I recommend to students is that they learn the fundamentals first, uh, being like, um, you know, my Violin Tutor Pro Series 1, like what you got, the DVD, uh, and just learning the basics of how to hold the bow properly, how to, um, you know, uh, go to the tip, you know, your smooth bows, uh, you know, figuring out your note spots, your intonation, stuff like that. So basically, I would suggest going through the, the fiddle one, or the, sorry, the Violin Tutor Pro Series one. And then from there, after you're done with the series, I would uh, recommend to you to uh, go to Series two, but you could also on the side learn fiddle one. A lot of my students do that. Um, but basically, the songs are, uh, you know, pretty easy at the beginning of fiddle one. But uh, it kind of doesn't go in, in as depth as far as technique goes. So mm -hmm. it's pretty good to definitely look into Violin Tutor Pro Series 1 like you're doing. Um, but, uh, yeah, a lot of my students come to me and they want to learn fiddle, and I tell them, you know, we should do a lot of the basics first, uh, even if they like that's, like, their number one thing. They want to learn, like, Devil Went Down to Georgia or they want to learn some, some sort of fun fiddle piece. I always tell them, you know, you need to – to learn some of the scales first and different things. So if you have that dream, uh, I'm certainly going to show you the right route, and that's learning, you know, the fundamentals. Because even as a fiddle player, you have to be able to do things properly. You have to have the, the proper bow grip. You have to, um, you know, be having. You got to have the right uh, position with your left hand. Uh, you know, some of the some people that just learn fiddle out there that don't pay attention to the fundamentals or like uh, have any interest in in kind of what you guys are doing and trying to learn. Uh, they have the worst technique in the world. I mean, their hands way down. You know, they're playing like this, and um, their bow grip is like you know way up here. You know, it's like they're just kind of sawing away. And um, some of the best fiddle players in the world are actually they're classically trained. You know, like uh, Mark O'Connor, uh, Craig Duncan, all those oh. fiddle players. They all learned classically first for their first part of their of their life, and then branched off. So I think the best way to do it is violin. Uh, fundamentals at least, and then the fiddle. But okay. I at least put that series out there because I know some people don't kind of like to uh, obsolete it. And uh, so the fiddle series one covers a little bit of technique, but it's not as much as the Violin Tutor Pro series one. And uh, both of those series are on my website. So if anybody's interested, it's at uh, violintutorpro.com. So I hope that answers your question. Yes. So, uh, <clears throat> so Debbie, um, tell me about uh, just how you found my, my lessons and, um, you know, what do you think so far as far as everything going on with the platform and uh, Facebook, everything like that? I found your form on um, YouTube by looking up easy fiddle songs, and there you were playing an easy fiddle song. <laughs> which, of course, is way advanced for me. And then I saw that you had a Facebook page, so I went to there, and I have. then I saw the Google Plus Hangout, and now I'm addicted to that. So I'm, I'm just trying to process all this in my mind before I actually try it on the, on the violin, which I want to be a fiddle. Very good. And yeah, like I, I was telling Susan yesterday on, in our class, uh, you know, the first five weeks is like the hardest because you don't really have a perspective on 
um, you know, the progress of the violin because, um, like I was saying yesterday, it takes time to see progress. It, it doesn't just come in a week and definitely not a day. If you look at it day to day, you're going to drive yourself crazy. Um, but, you know, once you've been playing a while, you're, you'll start to definitely see progress in three-month increments, definitely six-month increments. So just keep at it. And um, I was just trying to encourage people yesterday on, on the class, but every one of my students that's been playing only for five weeks or so, under five weeks, uh, none of them have mastered technique. It just takes muscle memory and time. So just know that it just uh, takes uh, doing the right things and just working at it, and uh, I'm here to help. So very good. So um, Susan, did uh, some of this make sense today as far as the slides? Yes, very much so. Um, I got the book this afternoon by, you know, I went to the music store and I was talking to them about you, and I just happened to pick up the book by surprise you were going to do it. Oh my goodness, that is hilarious. I, and I didn't even say anything about it yet, so that was like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. that is just crazy, wow. So tell me about the, uh, the meeting. So you went into the um, music store and uh, what, did you, what did you share with the, the people there? Basically, what I told them is that I found you on site, and if they, because they don't have a tutor or anybody in there right now, their um, their uh, teacher decided to leave where they were, and I said, well, I know this great site that I've been going on, and you know, why don't you tell your your uh, customers about it, and maybe they might like to uh, check it out, and I gave them your violin n uh, name. And I also gave them your uh, phone number for the River uh, Violin Tutor Program. So you might get some phone calls to that. But I do challenge everybody that has Facebook or whatever, get two of their friends to tell their friends, and then their friends maybe to tell their friends. And so it's basically a marketing pyramid for you. So I've already told a couple of my friends, and hopefully they'll tell theirs. Oh, thank you so much, Susan. I really appreciate that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, what I was uh, I posted yesterday um, on Facebook, and um, I was encouraging people to share my videos because I guess the more they're shared, the more you know they just get out there and, and they get ranked higher and stuff. And yeah, I mean, my goal with this is to just uh, influence as many people as possible to learn the violin. I can't tell you how many people I feel are out there that just are getting lost because they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> so uh, I'm I, one of them. I was one of them until I found you. Oh, uh, thank so. you. Um, but yeah, I really hope that you know people. You know, the second they get discouraged, or the second they're not sure what to do, um, you know, they're they know that I'm here, and uh, but they need to find me first. So um, hopefully, you guys help me out with that. Like Susan said, you know, telling a friend or two um, and sharing the videos on YouTube really helps. Uh, you know, anything interacting with others, just uh, getting the word out there is really appreciated. Um, Adeline, tell all your uh, you know, people from Germany that, uh, you know, Violin Tutor Pro is here to help. <laughs> yes, I will do it. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. So uh, please, uh, anybody, ask me, you know, any questions, anytime, uh, email me at rivertownviolin at hotmail.com. I'm still answering all my emails. Um, it's starting to get a little busy. I do have one person helping me a little bit with some emails, but uh, for the most part, about 80%. Um, answering. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to email me. I'd also have um, a live chat feature on my site that you can go on and ask questions uh, live right there. As long as I'm not teaching a lesson, I'm there and I'm available. Um, and uh, hopefully you guys will look forward to this uh, fiddle series. Uh, we'll learn some, some new songs next week. Um, hopefully you guys will get the book and um, we'll go from there. So and uh, kind of cool. Tomorrow I'm doing having a parade for all my students. They're walking in the in, a, in the Grand Rapids Christmas parade, but it's supposed to be like 30 degrees. So um, wish all my students the best as their fingers hopefully won't get frozen off and and they won't be able to play anymore. So hopefully they'll uh, hopefully they'll be okay. Um, but they're really excited. They're gonna walk and they have actually been, they've actually been practicing um, like marching around in my basement, like playing the song without music. Uh, so they're really excited about it. It's uh, Danny and Addie. You guys have maybe seen them on my face or my YouTube channel, um, but they're really excited about it. But I told them I don't know. It's going to be pretty cold, so we'll see. But um, yeah, I have to post a video of uh, of them doing playing. And actually, we have a video of us doing it downstairs too. So maybe I can post that on YouTube. You guys might like that. So 
All right. Well, thank you guys all for joining us, and I uh, hope you guys the best this weekend. Uh, we're doing a class tomorrow at five, um, not at seven. Um, and set, uh, Sunday, uh, Song Sunday, I'm going to be teaching a Christmas tune. Um, actually, we're going to be learning Frosty the Snowman this Sunday. Uh, Monday, um, we're going to be uh, doing the homeschool uh, class. So actually, Adam, when you could, I was just thinking like earlier that you were um, only able to do the one class a week, but I guess you can do these two, the Friday and Monday. Yes. <laughs> so that's, that's, good. that's good. Even though this one is very late for you. Um, mm -hmm. That's at 12 o'clock on Monday. Um, and then Tuesday, uh, we had a lot of people there last Tuesday. It was a little hectic, um, but we're starting to get organized now, um, having people mute their microphones, make sure we don't get all the sound stuff. Um, but uh, hopefully next Tuesday we'll, we'll have the class more organized and uh, we'll learn a bunch of stuff regarding beginner technique. Thank you guys so much for joining us, and uh, please let me know if you have any questions. Hope you guys have a great night. Bye-bye. Thank you, Michael.